So uh, welcome today to that session, um, S4 HANA, the move to S4 HANA, and then now what? Leveraging the benefit actually of the system. Uh, I just want to introduce myself a bit. My name is Thorsten Hübsch. I'm now for two months uh, working uh, for PricewaterhouseCoopers, leading there the SAP practice, uh, working before for uh, SAP themselves was uh, honored or doomed, you can put it uh, as you want, to have implemented the first SAP system on a HANA database, uh, uh, 2013, worldwide actually. So the spotlight was on Belgium at that moment. Uh, apparently that project didn't uh, go too bad, so I was also assigned to a project uh, implementing the first S4 HANA system worldwide. Again, spotlight on Belgium here uh, in, the, in the capital of Belgium in Brussels at the European schools. Uh, now, uh, since uh, April, I have joined the forces at uh, PwC and now just want to share with you um, something which is very often underrated, uh, under underrated, the actually why to move to S4HANA and what actually to get out of it. But let's start with a question. So I have a bit of an uh, impression uh, where you are. Who of you is actually already on S4 HANA? Just raise your hand. Okay. Uh, Who is actually within the project uh, working for S4 HANA? We have one, we have two, we have about, let's say 10, 10 to 12. Very good. And who is at the, at the moment of thinking about it, gathering information, preparing the project? Who is there? A lot more. It's not all. So I add a fourth question. Uh, who is not thinking about to go for S4 HANA? None. So we have some people who either didn't have the headsets on or uh, maybe the question was not clear enough. What we see here is actually very representative. So we have at the moment still very few companies who are actually already on S4 HANA. We have now the first projects going on. So in Belgium, we, we have about 20 companies being already on S4 HANA. We have another 20 to 25 companies who are right in the middle, who, are, who have started the project. But we also see now a very big interest to go to S4 HANA and people are gathering information and, and, and trying to get experience. So I hope uh, to be able to share with you there some uh, fruitful insights. Walking you a bit through the agenda, uh, the question first is why should I actually ask myself the question? Uh, I mean, many uh, people come up with, um, how do I move to S4 HANA? What are the pitfalls and so forth? All valid questions. Why is this person now coming up asking why to move? And I will uh, give an answer uh, why this is actually relevant for all of you, uh, no matter where you are in the process of going to S4 HANA. I would also give you a bit of an advice and here giving also a bit of expectation management. At the end of that session, you will not have the answer but you will have basically, as you see it also already on, uh, on the last uh, bullet point, you have a call to action to answer yourself the question and you will be enabled to find your answer on it because bad news for everyone, there is no storybook. There is no big book you can buy and say, if I read that book, I have my answer. But everyone has to go through that process himself because it's very specific depending on where you come from, where you want to go, and what are your constraints in the organization. Then I would like to share with you actually some uh, examples from customers. Customers who did that very well, who answered this question very well, who also followed up that questions, and others um, who did not do that well, and maybe either the one or the other example um, is sounding for you then also familiar. And last but not least, also already what I have uh, mentioned, uh, the call for action, uh, basically for you to uh, answer yourself the question. But why does that, un why does that, uh, th th that question matter? So what we see in the market uh, today is that we have a, lot, a very strong interest. So I've seen a lot of hands here when asking the question in the beginning. Uh, so this is also something we are not seeing only in Belgium. I just come back from, uh, from a, a, su a summit in, in Germany where we basically gathered um, partners from all over Europe and everyone says, listen, we are overwhelmed by the interest, by the people asking uh, about the different aspects uh, of S4HANA. What we also see is the ones who have already uh, passed the project, who have successfully completed the project, but also the ones who are in the middle, 
they very often perceive the project as a technical migration. And although they might have started with very good ambitions and with very high value ambitions, um, at the end they were very much into converting their system on S4HANA, putting the label on top of it and basically being happy that they've made it. I just already to go a bit uh, ahead in my presentation, this should not be the objective because it comes with a lot of uh, downsides. We also see that there's a limited knowledge of the features um, on, on S4HANA. So there was, for example, when, the, when there was the big hype in the beginning, so you might remember the 2015, there was first S4HANA Finance, where it was only limited into the change of the finance data structure, putting a, a HANA database underneath. Uh, Universal Journal might sound familiar to the one or the other. And then there was uh, the first real S4HANA system in November um, 2015, when uh, people got interested and uh, were listening and were diving into the features, and then it stopped. People said, well, I have certain restrictions here. I see the, the product is not yet ready. And then they stayed on that level, forgetting that they actually every year, on the on-premise version and every quarter for the cloud version, new features are introduced. And for SAP, it was very important actually to add these features because they sensed it. They sensed it that people said, I'm not going to ask for HANA because I still feel and I still see limitations. And so it is very important to follow up at least once a year to check what is out there. And also you might be aware of it, maybe not, but then that's uh, news for you. There are publicly available roadmaps not only for S4HANA, but also for every industry. So if you are working, for example, in media, in uh, financial services and so forth, specifically for every industry, there are publicly available roadmaps on things that are actually coming out this year in uh, September, but also the ones which are planned for the next years. What we also see is that very rarely in these projects, uh, value and even even less, impact studies are conducted. So many customers are then surprised what's actually, the, what's actually the profound impact on the organization. Just to name some of them, my last customer completely forgot to train the developers on S4HANA because they said, okay, the change is for all on the functional side. So what happened, they set up a new system uh, with developers uh, who were very experienced and seasoned already for 20 years and were continuing with the old developments instead of using core data service, instead of using Fiori, instead of diving into um, analytics, going again with Report Painter. Gosh, why am I going to ask for HANA when I use Report Painter again? And so forth. We also saw that uh, very often these um, projects are started under the ambition to go agile. That means people want to uh, ad adopt to sub-activate, but when you look behind, it's just the naming. So basically they put on scrums, they or uh, scrum sessions, they uh, went into, um, uh, into these, all, all these, these, these agile uh, parts, but at the end it was nothing else than a waterfall project labeled with ag agile thing. By the way, one of the things where I see uh, one of the biggest risks, because you create expectations towards your uh, customer, your business, you say you will deliver once a month or once every two months a version, and the version is not going to come up because it just doesn't work yet right, and the testing is not really working out. So let's go for the one big version at the end, ending up in a waterfall approach, ending up with a final test once in the project, and then exposing the, the new product uh, to the customer. And the customer says, well, I ordered a car and got a bike. That's actually not what I wanted to. And we are back again into the motivation of going into an agile mode. Uh, and then also something that we see is the project end at the go live. Go live and everything is done uh, because project is over, period. That is a big mistake because very often we end with a version one. Huh? And we have then actually the basis to go on innovation cycles. We are, we are then the basis to go on IoT. We are having the basis on going to machine learning and so forth. But this is not taken into consideration 
not taken into consideration, it will also not uh, basically influence the project with its value drivers. So coming back to the question, uh, uh, moving to S4HANA, now what? This translates to the one of you who are already in the project. I think there are uh, like uh, 10. Uh, why am I moving? So asking yourself during the project, wait a minute, why am I moving? And I'm just explaining you why this is uh, very important and the ones which is the majority here in the audience, uh, why should I actually move? And this question should be put very open in result. It's completely fair enough to answer today, well, I don't see a reason yet. Huh? And we have customers, I have been in conversations, very few, but some said we, we have just upgraded to enhancement pack, uh, enhancement pack 8. We have uh, a lot of investments put in there. Today, here today, I cannot answer the question why. This is especially uh, the case for very large organizations who want to secure their investments. It's going down and down, so it's less and less that we find these uh, these, uh, these, uh, these customers, but these uh, customers ex uh, exist. So why is, is this question then important? Well, it helps you to define your S4 roadmap in, a se in the sense of what do I need to focus first? Because if I answer the why, we, I also s uh, uh, know what I should uh, present to my customers first. It helps me for my business case. Huh? It defines for me the value and uh, for the ones who are in, you might be, uh, might have uh, come around that situation, you need sponsorship. No project will go without problems. And you will, someone high up in the business tree, uh, high, high up in the Christmas tree, sorry, not business tree, in, in the Christmas tree, who will back your project along the way going also when you are in troubled water. And if this person does not know why you move, what is the big promise and what is the big added value of the system, you uh, encounter a very difficult and very risky situation. And last but not least, when you are already in uh, on, on S4HANA, uh, it's of course then also uh, the thing of not having just a system running on HANA and being proud to be one of the few, today one of the few S4 customers, but actually getting also the value out of it and, and making these cases that we have seen from Michel Hasendong just two sessions ago, um, in finance that we, we attract Generation Y to give one of the why in the sense of I just had two weeks ago a conversation with a CIO and I, we were going into value discussion. He said, Tosten, stop, we don't have to go into that. I have 20 people hired who are Generation Y, young generation, and they would not work for double the salary in front of Sabgui. I have to move, period. I need to go on the next user experience so the old system is not, is simply not an option for me anymore. So, but uh, all easy, how do we approach that question? So basically we have uh, the objective to, to, to find out what is actually coming as an added value for me to, it's not, get, it's not easier, making it easier. Um, what is actually the added value of having uh, the S4? And there, question is, how do I define that? Well, I see that I have currently technical constraints which, um, uh, which, which, which drive down efficiency, which um, um, are not helping my business, which are really limiting me in my day-to-day -day, uh, day -day, uh, business um, in the company, in the different areas, in finance, in manufacturing. These need to be identified. But then also there might be ideas around to say, I would love to go into that business, but I know my backend is not supporting it. Very uh, simple example, subscription services. Subscription services come with a lot of data amounts and you will ha encounter the situation that your old SAP system will not be able to cope with these data amounts simply in the processing time because maybe your batch queues are already completely full and you're praying every morning that the batch is, is done so you can start your business. Um, and, and other areas where you simply say, putting that now on top, getting a volume times 10, getting a volume times 100 is not an option because we are already up here. Then basically once you define for yourself what is the biggest value driver, either to get rid of one of the limitations or to enable a new business, it's then about looking into the SAP assets, into the documented SAP assets, 
to check out what are the features which might help us. Very often, customers then end up and say, yeah, nice promise from SAP, great, but let's make a proof of concept. Let's dive into that, get a very specific example, a very specific process, and check if this promised value can be actually leveraged. And then at the end, once we have this outcome, we should then quantify uh, this, uh, this value that we see actually in the system uh, in moving to S4HANA for my specific value trial. What I have then as a result is actually, I have a prioritized list of, um, of, of values and S4HANA capabilities, which is a perfect starting point for a business case, which gives it a lot of credibility and a, a, a lot of, uh, let's say, um, uh, acknowledgement then uh, throughout uh, the stakeholders around the project. Now, I mentioned the assets, and here is maybe one of the uh, most important slides uh, of the whole, um, of, the, of this session. Where are these assets? You might be aware of 10,000 different documents coming from SAP. The question is, where are the documents which actually help you to define that? And these are the ones uh, that uh, are listed here. I will not go into detail, I will just name them because, small surprise, raising a bit the expectation, uh, you will get them. Um, so basically, we have on the one hand side always a slide deck uh, showing what is the delta between uh, the uh, previous version and the current version. Addressing one of the um, observations to say people are not catching up with new features. You have slide decks which simply show you what is now new in that. Next, if you are already in 